And welcome back to the show. Infinite Horizons is an organization that's helping properties owned by banks, faith-based institutions, not-for-profits, or the city into affordable housing, providing safe and decent housing for the community. The organization is one of the 12 minority business enterprise developers participating in the LISC NYC Developers of Training Program. And joining us now to share more details is the Infinite Horizons co-founder and CEO, Randall Powell, and then the co-founder and COO, Roland Powell. And it's a no, uh, no thing, they're brothers. And of course, we're glad to have the brothers, the Powell brothers here with us here on <laughs> Open. And uh, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having us, we appreciate it. Thank you. I guess I'll start off with Randall. Give us a little bit more about the work that uh, Infinite Horizons is doing. I gave a little bit of an intro, but uh, for somebody who wants something to know more in depth, please take us in. Sure. Infinite Horizons was started in 2007 when my, bro my brother Roland and I saw a um, uh, housing crisis taking place um, during that period. And it really impacted our community of uh, Southeast Jamaica, Queens. So we decided that, you know, what was happening really wasn't... Um, good for the community, it was causing a lot of blight and a lot of problems. And we figured that we would go into the market and start, you know, rehabilitating, you know, single family homes and foreclosed properties and turning them back into affordable housing. And that's really how we kind of launched. And then we scaled up from there and started applying for different RFPs and RFQs with the city of New York. And so for you as developers and developers of color, obviously it's not something that we see all too often. Talk to us a little bit more, uh, Roland, from the perspective of being a minority developer. What's it been like out there in the field in terms of you know, how you've been able to survive and what it's like being that, you know, being a minority in a traditionally white market? Um, first and foremost, it's, it's a great opportunity for uh, my brother and I. And uh, like you said, it, you don't see too many of, of us out here uh, in the market, but uh, it's, 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 it's been a grind, you know, my brother and I, you know, we, we got a, a lot of stamina, a lot of wherewithal. So, you know, we keep pushing forward and, you know, with, 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 a, with certain groups like this backing us, you know, it, it makes it a little bit easier. For us. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a grind, but we, we working on it. We getting it. Yeah. And so you guys have enrolled in the LISC NYC developers training program and uh, really some assistance to developers. Uh, give me a little bit about what you've been learning as a developer in this training program and what it's been able to bring to the table for you. Well, we, we've been learning how to um, scale up. That's what we really want to do. We want to scale up and uh, this is, is giving us a great opportunity to scale up because they, they, they put money behind you. And as you know, real estate is a very capital intense industry. So, you know, with the, the help of this, it's, uh, it's, it's been, you know, a serious grind and um, we look forward to continue and, and learning with this. Yeah. And so Randall, for somebody who doesn't know, uh, walk us through a little bit of the challenges, right? Uh, I think I've had this conversation before. Uh, developers, particularly in communities of color, have had certain challenges of really reaching that threshold and really having a strong footprint uh, across the city. They're present, but yet and still, it's an obstacle sometimes just to get it across the finish line. Talk to us about some of the challenges that you face uh, as an organization. Well, some of the challenges we face is kind of what my brother hinted at, um, and that includes having the uh, capital available to do acquisitions, especially when you're looking in the market. Um, also having funds for pre-development um, to actually get your project um, to the finish line, you know, um, when it comes to third party reports, when it comes to reaching out to vendors, when the architects, engineers to actually help you move your projects through the processes, you know, you need funds available. And that was one of the beautiful things about working with um, LISC is that they provided us with a pre-development loan to help us move our project, which is in uh, the Bronx, in the Melrose section of the Bronx on Cortland Manor. It's called Cortland Manor. It's located on Cortland Avenue and East 157th Street. So um, situations like that is when you really need um, capital and a good organizational team behind you to really support you with your project. And the pre-development funding that we received from LISC, you know, really helped us with that because, you know, putting up thousands of dollars to actually move these projects um, can be uh, very um, cumbersome and uh, put you in a very cash strapped position, you know, as an emerging minority developer in New York City. Yeah, and I know, you know, when we talk about access to capital, that's pretty huge. And so, uh, Randall, give me a little bit more about that, because when we talk about the access to capital, a huge barrier for a lot of people uh, in communities of color, it's not that 
the workers don't exist. It's not the companies aren't there, but at certain times not being able to meet certain thresholds to be able to, you know, catapult the project forward and to really be able to get that contract. So how has it been for you now uh, having this opportunity? What does it mean to you uh, to be able to do this now? So basically this, this list developers of uh, color training program gave us a strong knowledge base and foundation. We learned how to, um, you know, do underwriting and financing. We learned about joint venture partnerships. We learned about construction. Um, my brother and I are launching a small construction firm. Some of the nuances that, you know, really hold a, a lot of black developers uh, back is in terms of getting their financial capacity and their balance sheet, you know, and their cash flows in order so that way they can actually move to the next level. You know, some of these requirements you know, are very, you know, heavy when it comes to, you know, actually going out there and getting the dollars that you need to fund your project. And the list developers of training program really put you in a position so you have the knowledge base and wherewithal to be able to go out there, speak to the banks, work with different CDFIs such as LISC, and be prepared so when you are awarded a project or you do find a project, you can actually move forward in a timely manner. Because as we know, um, you could be in pre-development for a long time, but you really have to get into construction, construction loan closing, and then eventually um, build the building and complete the project so that way you can start establishing your track record cash flows and everything you need to move on to the next project. Yeah. Roland, what's been the most rewarding in uh, your time and being in this program right here? So uh, when you look back and see, what, the, what what's your biggest takeaway so far? Um, like my brother said, uh, with, with Liz, you know, they, they backed us, you know, financially. And then also they help us increase our knowledge base, you know, on, like I said, we, we, we're trying to build a, a family business. So, you know, we want to bring our, our, our children into this and, you know, leave a legacy for them. So with, with what we've been learning with Liz is, um, you know, like my brother said, uh, um, how to uh, uh, do estimates and, and, and also, you know, uh, um, um, large, large scale projects, you know, you, you, cause sometimes you get, you get stalled on your projects and with this backing us financially, you know, it, it helps us move the, the, the ball along. So we really appreciate you guys. Yeah. Uh, are, are you optimistic given the fact there's so much housing that's now out there, so much development that's going on uh, across New York City, uh, being able to sufficiently crack that market, if you will, because uh, we know that it's been a, you know, it's been a hard ceiling to crack, but yet and still you're finding a way to do it. Are you optimistic as we enter the 2022, we see things starting to open up and we see how more development is happening uh, that yourself and other minority based organizations uh, will be able to have a stronger footprint? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We we definitely gonna uh move the move the margin up because if if you want to get into something, now's the time. You know, you got a lot of good programs going on from minority-owned developers. So this is a great opportunity for us. So absolutely, we are very optimistic. We will store for a little while, but things are starting to look a little bit more rosier. So we are we're in a great we're in a good position. Our, our projects are starting to gain momentum. They're starting to move. So yes, definitely, we are we are very optimistic about things in the future. Randall and Roland Powell of Infinite Horizons, and we encourage you to let us know exactly what's going on when it comes time for that ribbon cutting and the work that's going on. We want to definitely see if we can get our cameras out there to see and celebrate uh, some development that's going on right here in our borough of the Bronx. So thank you both for sharing with us. Most definitely. We definitely uh, call you guys out for the ribbon cutting and for the finished product. We'd love to have you out. All righty. Well, thank you guys much. And I uh, want to let you know, now, if you want more information, I encourage you to visit their website. And their website is Infinite Horizons, uh, red, redc.com. Let me say it again, Infinite Horizons, redc.com. Once you stay with us, we do have more open coming up. We've taken a quick break and we'll return right after this.